So one of the most common questions we get at Network Optics is how do you back up NX Witness VMS or other Powered by NX products storage archives uh, to the cloud? Um, so today I'm going to show you how. Um, so there is a solution out there um, for backing up to cloud locations. It's called uh, Tiger Tech Surveillance Bridge. Um, and what it is, is it's a third party software. Um, and it uh, allows you to install this application called the Tiger Surveillance Bridge on a Windows uh, OS. Um, and then it you can point it to a specific folder or a group of folders, um, and it will replicate that information to the cloud. Uh, and, and you can even set it up so that it removes that, that information as well um, and stores it in the cloud, or you can set it up so it's just replicating information. Um, and with Tiger Surveillance Bridge, you can uh, back up to cloud storage locations. So basically any cloud, uh, AWS, uh, Wasabi, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google, um, all the usual suspects. Um, or you can also um, back it up to a private data center or a private storage location, like a local storage uh, location, like a NAS device or a DAS device or, you know, any type of network based storage that you have. Um, so that is basically the way that you can back up to any cloud. So what I'm going to show you today is how do you um, set up Tiger Bridge um, and then how do you activate it um, and then link it to a specific cloud storage location. And for today's demo, I'm going to be using Wasabi cloud storage. So uh, I'm going to connect. I'm connected actually uh, to my NX2, which is a little computer uh, right behind me. Um, and you can see I've downloaded uh, Tiger Surveillance Bridge. So again, it's only for Windows OS. Um, you download the package um, from Tiger Surveillance. You'll need to sign up with them um, in order to get access to the technology. Um, and they will give you a trial license if you just want to try it out. Um, and they'll give you pricing and everything for uh, how the solution is priced. Um, and you can go from there. So I'm setting this up on Windows. You can see right now, um, it's gonna go ahead and just install it to our standard program files uh, location on Windows. Uh, you gotta agree the license terms and conditions. Um, you wanna install both of these things. Um, so surveillance bridge has to be installed somewhere on a server um, and it has to be installed on the same server that the NX server application is running on. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm putting it on the NX2 device behind me, which is Windows based. Um, they also have a shell extension. So let's say you have multiple servers in a system. Um, you would install a surveillance bridge application plus the shell on one of them. Uh, and then you could add the shell extension to additional servers um, so that you don't have to install uh, Tiger Surveillance Bridge on every single server, uh, just the shell extension. So we're going to go ahead and install this on just the one uh, machine, the NX2. Um, it shouldn't take very long, um, but I'll be back as soon as it is done installing. Uh, it usually takes a minute or two, uh, and then we can uh, continue the video. So I'll be right back. So the installation is just finishing up. Um, it took about less than a minute. Uh, and you can see that the surveillance bridge uh, has been successfully installed. So go ahead and finish that. You can see now I've got a little icon on the desktop over here, Surveillance Bridge. I'm going to double click on that to launch the application. Uh, Windows will ask you if you if you want to make sure to do that. Uh, so I've done that. So um, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and set up your license. Now I've already done it, um, but in order to set up a license, it's pretty simple. You just go to license information um, and you're going to have a username and a password that's provided. Uh, by Tiger Technology um, that you'll be using to set up the license. So you can see here I've got unlimited uh, capacity for my trial license. Um, and then, you know, we can start to look at the application itself. Um, so there are a couple of different policies. There's a disaster recovery policy, uh, basically allows you to um, just replace the failed source and connect it back to your, your cloud target to recover any any files you have um, in your cloud storage or your local storage, wherever you designate as your storage uh, location. Um, you've got local retention policy. 
So you can set this one up by age. So let's say um, you haven't accessed any recordings, which means uh, the NX Witness client or your Powered by NX uh, desktop client hasn't been used to review video from uh, from from uh, the archive for more than like eight hours. Uh, you can set up the age at which you want it to um, uh, move those files to the cloud. And what happens is when you move the files, it just replaces the, the folder structure with what's called a stub file. Um, and so your cloud-based storage ends up looking exactly like uh, local storage. The other thing you can do is just uh, move by size. So let's say when recording space exceeds like 80%, um, let's say I want to keep my drives uh, operating really well. So basically I want to set up the uh, recording uh, to 80% to keep 20% of my drives uh, free so that they're operating well. Um, then I can do that by size, which is what I'm going to do. Um, one thing to note is that the retention period that's set on the VMS applies to the recordings on the local disk and target. So what that means is if I set up a, a retention period of like 90 days uh, on uh, on the server, on, on a camera, um, then it's going to continue to record for 90 days. Um, basically, what this is doing is allowing me to extend my storage. So one option is I just put in less local storage. And then I have uh, all the cloud, all the uh, storage moved to the cloud whenever my disk uh, exceeds 80%. And then I can purchase additional terabytes of storage or, or petabytes of storage in the cloud, depending on how big my system is. Uh, and then I can just continue to record the cloud. Um, Surveillance Bridge is going to be using your internet connection to move those files. So you're going to have to have a, a decent internet connection, depending on how much bandwidth you're actually producing uh, with your cameras. Um, but that's what uh, the retention period and how it interacts with the VMS's retention period uh, works. So I'm gonna go ahead and press apply here, uh, 80%. Uh, and then archive period, um, basically same thing. Um, if I want to archive something and move it off of the system completely, uh, then I can use this by age. I'm not gonna do it right now. Um, so, this basically acts as a true archive. So if, if a recording is older than like seven days, just move it to the cloud, right? Uh, is, is one way you can uh, do that, take advantage of this feature. So local retention period is off. So now I gotta go to um, add a source. So add a source, this is where you choose what files, uh, what folders are gonna get, uh, have Tiger Surveillance Bridge work on them. So for NX Witness, um, what you'll find is that if you have like a storage drive, you'll see the HD Witness Media folder. And I can choose either just high quality backup or low quality backup, or if I just choose the whole folder, it's just gonna back up that whole folder um, based off of the retention uh, settings I set up earlier. Um, so I'm gonna choose HD Witness Media. I'm just gonna choose the whole folder and press okay, right? And then it's gonna ask me to um, it's going to switch to pause mode, so it's not going to be doing any backup. And then here's where you can see the different types of options that you can uh, set up as a target for the archive backup or the, the where you're going to move the files to. Right. So you've got public cloud for Amazon S3, Azure, Google Cloud, IBM Cloud, Backblaze, Google Drive, Live Cloud, Store Space, S3 compatible, and Wasabi. Um, for on-prem stuff, you've got Hitachi, HTTP, IBM Cost, OpenStack, Swift some form of S3 compatible storage that's local. Uh, Seagate Cortex, which is a cool object-based storage uh, solution that we work with on Seagate. Black Pearl, Coes, I don't even know what that is, Coeus, uh, Fujifilm. And then you've got local storage location, a network storage location, or even a tape drive. Um, for today's demonstration, we're gonna use Wasabi because it's cloud-based storage. So when I go to Wasabi, I'm gonna press okay. See, Wasabi, uh, the name of the target is Wasabi. Um, uh, the target's Wasabi, the name of the target. You can name it whatever you want, like Wasabi Cloud Backup, right? Um, up to you, I'm just gonna leave it as Wasabi. Um, the server URL is already predefined because uh, Tiger technology works with these different cloud storage providers, but you'll notice you need an access key and a secret key. So in order to do that, uh, to find that information, we've got to um, log into Wasabi. Um, so let me let me log into Wasabi. You know what? I'll go back over here. It 
it's going to make me log in. Now, underneath your access keys, uh, sorry, you're going to need to grab an access key and a secret key. So in order to do that, you go to access keys over here, right? And then you can uh, choose one of the keys that you want or create a new access key. Um, I'll just generate a new access key. I'm going to do it as a root user and I'm going to go ahead and press create. And then I'm going to, uh, oh, I've got a quota. Never mind. I'm just going to delete these old ones. I've been testing this before. So let's do another access key, create. I'm going to download the CSV file and then I'm going to open that file, right? So uh, these are my keys down here. Um, and I'm going to delete these keys after this video so you guys can see them. Not a big deal. Um, so I get rid of the, uh, sorry, I've got the access keys down here. So you can see this is the access ID key here. And then the secret key. I'm going to copy and paste the access key in. And I'm going to copy and paste the secret key in. And I'm going to list my buckets. So assuming that I have a good... Uh, connection you can see that I've already defined a bucket um, and that happens in the wasabi interface here uh, you can just decide a bucket a bucket is a place where you're gonna store uh, information uh, on wasabi cloud storage um, so I've got my buckets here I'm gonna choose that bucket and then I'm gonna press apply um, so when you press apply you have the options to do um, uh, to, to choose which type of action is gonna be uh, performed on any existing date in the target so no action means that no data is going to be imported from the target. It can be later import imported using Explorer command. Uh, disaster recovery light means only metadata is going to be recorded. It's going to recreate the entire folder structure from the target. Uh, and it may be long depending on the number of files and the network speed. Um, and then import all metadata and restore all data. Um, if you want to have full disaster recovery, um, you can use this method as well. Um, for video, you don't really need to bring in the associated metadata, um, but you can. Um, if you were backing up like your um, database uh, folder or your uh, where your uh, where your uh, motion data indexes are and your log files and everything, you may want to do full recovery. Um, but since we're just doing uh, video files, we'll just use Disaster Recovery Lite right now, um, and then press OK. And you can see um, our our setup is all done, everything's connected, and all I need to do now is just go ahead and, and press resume. Um, and now I am backing up information, like video archives uh, from my local NX Witness system uh, to my Wasabi cloud storage. Um, and there you go, that's pretty much it. So this is how Tiger Technology Surveillance Brig Bridge uh, works with NX. Um, it, again, it works with NX Witness VMS. It works with Powered by NX VMS uh, products as well. Um, and it's really simple, um, really straightforward, and a great way to kind of expand your cloud, your, your storage capacity. Um, if you've got like a limited storage environment, um, one project, for example, we're talking uh, about doing right now is a, is a solar panel monitoring. We've got lots of different sites. They're going to be using small arm devices. They don't have a lot of storage on them. Uh, they want to be able to expand the storage capabilities and, and keep up to like, let's say 120 days of storage. Um, this is a, a way for them to accomplish that um, without having to figure out a way to have local storage on-prem. Um, another thing you can do is just uh, make sure you have disaster recovery. So if there's like a, a fire or an explosion, if you're like in a hazardous chemical environment or Maybe if you live along the coast and uh, there's flooding or there's uh, tidal waves or something, <laughs> something horrible, um, then this is a method of doing disaster recovery. And um, it's just a way to have data replication as well. Um, so Tiger Surveillance Bridge uh, works with an X. This is how you do it. Thanks, guys.